for Norwich Boxing here with Scott the Iron Duck Moises. Um, first time we've sort of been able to catch up with you because you've sort of been helping out at your own gym at Alsham to keep that going. Um, I'm going to go all the way back to sort of where it started for you. What what made you get into boxing and like as a, as an amateur and then on as a professional? Well, when you start boxing, oh well. Uh, truthfully, I was on the way back from writing a love letter to a girl, and I was walking back down the alleyway and I got jumped and had the shit kicked out of me. And so uh, my mum took me down a boxing club to learn to defend myself. <laughs> there we go. So yeah. But this is a thing, don't, don't use boxing out on the streets, but as a defence, it's obviously worked for yourself. Going on from there, you obviously went on box well as an amateur. Turning professional, what, what, why, why turn professional and what was your aim in the professional game? Well, when I first got uh, sort of what the term pro um, was after, I was, uh, when I was ill, and thought, God, cause I, I was actually getting bored of amateur boxing. And all together, and then as soon as I got ill, and as I couldn't box, I oh, really missed it. That was how much I actually loved it. And I was like, oh, what was a pro? And at the time, um, obviously, was when Calm was then sort of in the Olympics and turned pro. And my aim was to turn pro and knock him out, but <laughs> I never got to that level. <laughs> Since turning professional, you've been sort of in with some of the best in the world. Um, one that I mean, me and you have spoke previously, but Terry Flanagan. Um, Talk us through the experience of sharing the ring with him, and what what were your thoughts of him when you sort of left the ring? God, I can't remember. Um, he was the sh hardest punch I've ever been in the ring with, and that was at featherweight. I mean, he was still featherweight. He still hit harder than what anyone has hit me. Um, that was a brilliant experience. First person ever put me down as well. So that was a buzz. <laughs> <laughs> that was, uh, no, I knew he was going to be a, a classy opponent. Um, and going to be a world champion because he just was in that ring, just brilliant. He puts an awful southpaw. <laughs> um, Mitchell Smith, your second shot at the area title. Um, many saw sort of the fight a draw, or it could have gone either way, really. Um, it was a shot to the body that sort of affected you. Um, what happened in that fight, and what sort of slowed? What what made you slow down? You know, with from that sh body shot. I think I think it was just a body shot. I couldn't recover from it for two rounds. It was um, me. I didn't quite make weight white, and it affected me because normally I just suck it up, and it, it didn't win me. But it, it sucked the energy out of me for a couple of rounds, and I was, uh, wasn't able to get back on with things. Um, and then obviously I came back, and I think I caught me in the eighth round, and ninth and had the eighth or seventh, eighth and ninth. Then obviously I think the I mean, be honest with you, I wouldn't have given him that fight. I don't think it was a draw. I, I wouldn't. I would have given it to him by a round. I don't think I was robbed in that fight, but it was a close fight, though. Going on from there, the opportunity to fight Luke Campbell come up, um, which obviously you're going to take. Um, what was the experience like? You know, you, you're boxing um, live on Sky Sports. Uh, it was headline of the whole show. Obviously, Luke Campbell, Olympic gold medalist. Big, big, big occasion. Um, and many, still to this day, obviously, after... Luke Campbell's last opponent, maybe not so, but most difficult fight for him. What was the occasion like? You know, the camp, the d the weigh-in day before, um, and then obviously the night. Uh, to be honest with you, it was um, clearly I can't really remember. Uh, the camp was good. Obviously, I was working away at the same time, so that was a bit made things awkward. But I was sort of driving here and back, getting sparring in, and um, Graham got me in touch with a gym up where I was working to go train there and so yeah, it was a good camp I was fit for it um, it was a really good buzz though I think I think I let the moment get to me too much in that fight but yeah, it was brilliant um, there's a video sort of circulating the website the internet um, where y on your way in you know you you had a few words in front of the press and then with your face to face with Luke Campbell um, there was a few words said can you remember what was said <laughs> I think uh, um, oh, when we went head to head after the way, and, uh, and it says, I go, should we kick off like everyone else? And <laughs> he goes, yeah, yeah go on, I'll give you a little push. I'll give you a push, me, I'm going to put you through rock bottom to that <laughs> table. <laughs> Just joking around. He was a, he's a nice character, nice character. I don't see him becoming world champion there. Um, everyone knows he's sort of big on the, he's big for the weight. Um, you experienced that, you know, you weighed in with him. 
see what he was like on them scales. The night, the, 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 the night then went by, fight night come round, and entering the ring was a different figure from what you've told me. But what did you see on the night? Well, I don't know. Like, it was weird. I like, got the way, and he was it was the same build as me. And I was like, oh yeah, you know what? Well, nice long jab, should be a good fight. And then they like, got in the ring, took his robe off. I mean, Schwarzenegger stands in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> it filled out so much. You know. Do you think that that's what sort of shoe in that fight? You know, like um, yeah, it was a dominant figure. Yeah, he makes what is it? That's what you call perfect conditioning. But when you train full time, you got that advantage. Not that I the better. <laughs> <laughs> um, since the Luke Campbell fight, um, you sort of went up a weight class and sort of played around with different things in boxing, you know. Um, you went away and fought over in Tenerife. Um, what was that like, you know? It's a completely different situation to whatever you've boxed in in England. Well, that was, uh, that was brilliant, to be honest with you. Um, but again, that was a whole new experience as well, going away in the sun, you know, having a weigh-in the day before and then spending the rest of the day on the beach. Never had that before. And then, obviously, um, there's quite a few English people sort of bought a ticket out there to come over and watch as well, which I think is the uh, most tickets I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know any of them either, so that yeah, was a good, good buzz. That was one of the best experiences, if not the best experience that I've had so far. Since then, you're sort of becoming active. Um, you sort of announced retirement, but you're contemplating a return. Do you think we could see the return in 2016, or? To be honest with you, it all depends on how my amateur club gets on. Obviously, we had a lot of the coaches leave, if not all of them, and um, it was sort of the club shuts, or we stay open. And a lot of the time, I help coach and um, get my coaching course done, to try and keep the club going. Um, there's now three coaches, with us and um, so yeah, I've done that sort of help out, teach. We had Rob Wright down there as well, who's been a huge help. He's got fundraising coming in, he's helping coach, he's got a mini bus now so we can go and take the boys sparring elsewhere and keep him interested. So he's been a massive help down sort of down the boxing club. And obviously we've got um Mick Romanus down there, our only coach we have down there, um sort of registered. Um as soon as he does his level two coaching course we can get kids Carved up, sparring, fighting, and we've got a few other coaches down there now helping out. So hopefully they will pass their coaching course. Or I'll, I'll contemplate making return if you know, if it doesn't go planned, and I'll be taken over as a coach at Alsham. So you're still going to be in the boxing game, whether it's as a coach or oh whether you come back as a yeah, as I a pro. Love, love boxing too much. I mean, even down here, I'm just going to keep myself fit, uh, help out with sparring, and run the amateur club either. Yeah, I've always been involved in boxing. I've been a big part of my life pretty much now. There we go. It was finally our opportunity to meet up with Scott, the Iron Duck Moises. Hopefully we see him back in the ring in 2016. Um, but thanks for your time, Scotty. And I'm sure we'll meet up again in the future when you make your big return. <laughs> and, um, yeah, if you want to just like our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter and subscribe to us on YouTube, it'll be brilliant. Thanks for and if any single girls could add me on Facebook as well, I'm you know, desperately seeking. <laughs> One last thing for you single girls. This boy here is um is probably the best singer I think I've ever witnessed going, <laughs> going to any shows. Um, this is something that I've always wanted to know and I, I sort of asked quite a few times and you know, you always say, oh, I can't remember. Or, what did you sing to Luke Campbell on that night at Hull? I think it was Enya. There we go, Enya. Luke Campbell, favourite. <laughs> <favorite. laughs>